you uh, in 1961, you had an opportunity. This was your first experience. You'd heard about the second city from yeah. Chicago. Let's hear about it. this. Is the most amazing audition in, in well, they again. Uh, they came to New York. Didn't they, they came to New York, and they saw everybody, but really everybody. And I was just starting out, and it was really. Uh, uh, the dregs when they got to me, you know what I mean? And I sat with my mother, I took my mother, and we sat in the agent's office and we were the last people in, last girl in. And they were just, it would have been a terrible day. It was very hot and, was, and they said to me, uh, oh, they're smart asses. I didn't like the Second City people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we're getting to that, yeah. I know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they said something like, uh, well, tell us what happened in this room. And one of them was on the phone, two of them. I said, a lot of very rude people stand here and make phone calls and are mean to people outside and people wait for five hours. Blah, blah, blah. And they said, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> you're see, hired. See, they thought you were improvising. You were just pissed. I was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that hilarious? That's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah. And then when I would do you got things hired. later. Off, off to Chicago off for to you. Send her to Chicago. There she goes. <laughs> then I got to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. You have said if there were no Second City, there'd be no Joan Rivers. But True. tell us about landing in a very sort of uh, creatively charged atmosphere. Second City, and I repeat, the experience was the best in my life. I learned to improvise. I learned what I think I should say because it's going to be funny, and that's who I am. So all that was... God loves Second City, and God bless Second City for that. But now let's get to seven people killing on stage for a moment and nobody being generous. And, you know, because it's improvised, so if I get the line in, I've got it. Yeah. And if you don't, huh, too bad for you, honey. And you are, yeah, well, tough, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And you had to fight for your life. And I couldn't find, the first two weeks, I couldn't find my voice box placement. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't speak. Well, you actually were not, yeah, again, your personality was not an aggressive, uh, shocking not, to all, but you, you were not going to insert yourself no, like that. No, women love me because of that. Yeah. Women will leave me, if they're going out of town for three years, they'll say, Joan, you stay with my husband. Because they know nothing will happen. <laughs> I'm not a purpose. Some of your Chicago work remains classically remembered. I know the, the great one, which I know you don't want to hear about. I do. But there was one was called Model and Taylor, which was a great piece. Let's talk about that. You did that with Anthony, Anthony Holland. the Holland. best. Yeah. Friend of mine forever. And this is, a, we should talk a little bit about this sketch because it, yeah. you, you were the model. You were, this was. I was the model and he was the guy fixing the hem and we were just talking and I just did a turn. And of course it was all about romance. Was, you know, those wonderful things, which are two shy people asking each other out. It's a beautiful piece. And it was a great piece. I loved it. And we got um, great reviews, and he was an exquisite actor. He, uh, uh, well, it was his idea, wasn't it? He saw some He saw, it, he saw an ad yeah. in Vogue of a, a model being uh, pinned by a, a tailor, and he ripped it out, and he said to me, yeah. let's do this. And I love those pieces with two weird people get together. It's a beautiful pirouette you do the yeah. whole time yeah, as, as this is going on. Wearing a black Jack's dress, is that yes. right? Yeah. Uh, they bought me one dress mm -hmm. at Second City. Well, they, they splurged there. <laughs> one. <laughs> you know what you smell like by Saturday night? <laughs> I mean, it's like, you can't you even get a clean. You smell like comedy, Joan. That's, <laughs> that's the, uh, uh, but that's a, but th there was a, a hint of uh, your, your future uh, material in there because she, she is having a hard time getting a guy, finding her man, and yeah. she says to him at one point, it's husband hunting, really, that you'll, her name was Rita. Rita. I'll, I'll take anybody, Mr. Farber. He walks, he talks, he's it for me. That's right. That's take uh, anybody, Mr. Farber. He walks, he talks. He's it for me, okay? <laughs> oh, Rita, you're a much more beautiful girl than you give yourself. Oh, Mr. Farber. I, I, I remember the whole thing. He finally tells you his first name, which happens to be your father's first name, Meyer. Meyer. Was yeah. that intentional? Yeah. Yeah. And then he used to do, he was such a great actor. You say to me, do you notice anything different? And I'd say, you cut your hair. N Contacts! <laughs> <laughs> it was just... That's part of the bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was so great. Yeah, that's terrific. But you learn, you learn to be self-reliant there, really. Yeah, and you, and you learn to truly, mm -hmm. truly, um, what you thought was going to work, mm -hmm. give it a shot. Yeah, you could make bright people laugh at the Second City, right? You could make... Only bright people came in. Yeah. The smarties. That's where it all came from. That's where it all came yeah, from. Yeah. Then Mike Nichols came in and he would direct you and he'd say, like, do this. And if he liked it, he would laugh. Yeah. And suddenly you'd be there and you'd hear Mike laughing out in the audience and you'd go, oh, that's good. So then you'd go to the next level and you'd hear Mike laugh a little more. Then you'd try it a little more. 
And then when you didn't hear Mike laugh anymore, you knew we've hit the level. <laughs> but it was such a positive way of telling someone that's good, bring it out.